It's happening all over again, again. And you know what the thing is? When it happens, happens does it. Because there will always be a new it that happens again. Because again, inherently, applies yet another time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, we need to talk about it, it being the latest, greatest, craziest FOMO book of the week, two weeks, month maybe. I don't know what the hell is going on, but everybody is hunting Blood Hunt number one, the one in 25, Lanil Francis U cover homage Crime Suspense 22. And in this video, we need to talk about this. We need to cover the secondary market sales and ask ourselves the question, are these Blood Hunt EC homages going to continue to hold their value later on in the future? But of course, before I get into the video, if you guys could like, comment, subscribe, I would appreciate it. Help support the channel doing those things. But let us get into this video here today. Now, if you guys don't know, Blood Hunt number one, the one in 25 variant cover, which of course is the homage to Crime Suspense number 22. This book has been going absolutely insane on the secondary market. I don't know how it started. Maybe you guys out there know how it started. Maybe you can let me know in the comment section, but we're going to try to figure this all out together. What is it about this book that has made collectors Go absolutely insane. Now, for context, Blood Hunt is the new Marvel crossover event. You know, I think it stars the Midnight Suns or some of those characters written by Jed McKay. It's going to be some vampire, uh, you know, crossover event storyline. And of course, like many of the storylines, they do these variant covers. And if you are familiar with uh, the Crime Suspense 22 cover, which is the EC cover that came out in 1954 drawn by Johnny Craig that would feature the decapitated uh, woman on the cover which was used in the Senate hearings uh, that was uh, you know kind of made famous for having been uh, one of the books that was uh, pointed to as being not appropriate for kids well you know with this new blood hunt crossover storyline we have this new 1 in 25 variant and it is selling like hotcakes. Cue the phrase swag because we got to run the Benny Hill music and we have to see all of the crazy sales and the high numbers, the high dollar amounts we are seeing for this book. I mean, guys, a one in 25, which, you know, in case you don't know, typically a one in 25 will average around, you know, $25 on the secondary market, you know, kind of the going rate. But this book has gone absolutely bananas, you know, since earlier this month, from when it hit retail, you know, starting off around, you know, the $50 mark, you know, going up to 64, 64, 70, you know, you can see uh, here on May 4th, it's a $78 book at auction. Then we go a couple of days later. Now people are buying it now for $125. You know, you go a couple of days later, all of a sudden people are paying 250 for it, uh, 287 with 33 bids on this one, 279, 240, absolutely insane numbers. Look at this, a pre-screen 9.8 selling for six hundred dollar six hundred dollars on the pre-sale for this thing that is unbelievable to me unbelievable to me i mean you can't even get six hundred dollars for uh legitimate keys at this point now of course you know maybe the book has tapered off a little bit in these last couple of days people are getting steals of deals buying it for only $190, you know, a lot less than the, uh, you know, 215 that you see right here. But it is uh, pretty impressive, you know, how much this book is selling, the numbers that it is going for. And I'm not really too sure what it is that makes this book so special, other than the fact that, you know, it is a very, very cool cover. It seems to be a very exciting, you know, Marvel storyline that's going to happen. I mean, there's a lot of fun stuff going on. It comes in a poly bag, you know, that says appropriate audiences, explicit content. Content. Maybe it is sort of like the, uh, you know, explicit nature of it that just sort of makes it fun to collect. Although, just so you guys know, if you're wondering, hey, should I keep my books in the poly bag? Well, if you do ever send it in for grading to CGC, they're just going to remove the poly bag anyway. So, you know, I kind of feel like as far as collecting is concerned, you know, the poly bag doesn't really matter all that much. I mean, maybe if you're going to sell the raw copy on the secondary market, people want it polybagged. But if you ever go to grade the book and get the maximum amount of value out of it, like this uh, pre-screen 9.8, 
that this person actually sold for, you know, $600 right here. Uh, CGC is going to take it out of the bag when they actually go to slab the book. So uh, a little bit of a, a tidbit for you guys. But either way, it's very, very interesting that this book has had so much success on the secondary market. Of course, it features Thor, you know, with the decapitated head right there. And maybe that's really why it's so interesting of a book to have in people's collection is because, you know, it's featuring, you know, the superhero that actually has his head cut off. I mean, we've actually had this book uh, homage before where we have, you know, here in Wolverine uh, number 55, uh, we actually have a saber tooth with his head, you know, taken off presumably by Wolverine right there. And this is also a book that, you know, does sell fairly decently, you know, on the secondary market. You know, it's 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 a variant that has some value out there. You know, last few sales for this one going at the, uh, you know, $225 range for a 9.8 here, $208 for a 9.8 there. So, you know, there is some value, but it definitely does not compare to some of the pre-sales that we're getting for this book, which, like I already pointed out to you, is at the $600 level. And I guess that's kind of where we need to transition now to the next part of the conversation where this is a comic event crossover and we're presumably going to be having more stories coming out and we already are seeing, you know, more covers that will be sold for this book as well, or at least uh, more EC homages uh, we can talk about here. So I just kind of wanted to show you guys a few of them that are seemingly coming out, you know, in the near future. Here you have Blood Hunt Red Band number three, which of course, you know, the one with the Thor I just showed you is Blood Blood Hunt number one. Uh, this is also the one in 25 homage right here, pre-sale 61224. And you can see if you're familiar with this uh, Vault of Horror cover, this one features the Fantastic Four on it. We got Blade, Dracula, and Doctor Strange in the uh, little bubbles on the side, and then you have the hands bursting out of the ground. Well, you guys would know if you're uh, EC collectors that this is an homage to Vault of Horror number 26 with the hands bursting out of the ground as the car swings around. And this is also a book where already you're seeing crazy pre-sales for this one. Look at this. Sold price pre-sale for $100. Again, I believe that this is also going to be a 1 in 25, so uh, selling 4X above, you know, the typical going rate for a 125 cover, uh, you know, here you have an $80 one. And people are already sort of thinking that like, hey, you know, this is uh, going the way of uh, this Thor homage right here where, you know, it started off with the pre-sales, you know, around the $70 level. And then all of a sudden it jumped up, you know, to this $200 mark. So people are taking a flyer on this one as they are taking a flyer on this other one right here, which I will show you now, which is Blood Hunt number four. This one is the homage to the Tales from the Crypt Al Feldstein cover, you know, this one features Dracula, Blade, Doctor Strange on it with uh, Tony Stark actually getting buried underground right there with the uh, Iron Man helmet. Now, don't get me wrong. These covers are really, really fun. They're really, really cool, but it's crazy how much they are selling for, you know, at this current moment in time. And uh, of course, just to show you guys, this is the Tales from the Crypt number 28 with the guy being buried alive right here, drawn by Al Feldstein uh, that this... Uh, cover is paying homage to. And I think that that's something that we should talk about here, you know, this idea of, you know, the cover swipe uh, as far as like using other characters we know on famous co comic book covers. I mean, we've had this conversation many times on the channel here before, uh, but one of the things that, you know, is, is important to point out is that while these books will always sort of sell, you know, to a lot of collectors because, you know, yeah, it's it's fun to have, you know, an ASM 300 homage in your collection. It looks nice together with the original book or, you know, if you're just a fan of a, a certain style, you know, then you're going to really, really like it. If you, if you like the EC covers, you know, these are going to be a lot of fun. Um, but once you kind of pull the cat out of the bag, once this is a thing that is out there, then, you know, the luster is lost a little bit, right? And I point to, you know, these Disney cover homages, which initially out of the gate, you guys remember these ones when they were doing the Avengers 4 homage and they had like the uh, the Iron Man homage and things like that. Uh, there were some of these books that at the initial launch of them, uh, people were going crazy for these things. Everybody was buying them. I think that there was a black and white uh, ratio variant one that was selling like crazy. But one of the problems is, is that once it showed to be successful, well, the following books that came out after didn't sell nearly as well. And I'm showing you guys a few more of this sort of series of Disney books uh, that, you know, had recently been homage to, you know, popular covers that we know. These are now coming out and, you know, frankly, they're not doing that well 
on the secondary market. And kind of where I'm going with all this and why I kind of bring it up is just a sort of a warning, you know, to everybody out there that, hey, these are awesome covers. Definitely pick it up if you, if you like it. Will there be a time later on when this book sells for cheaper than what it's going for now? Uh, most likely, yeah. But what I really want to say is that, you know, if you're somebody out there who thinks that these next upcoming ones are going to sell for the same amount as say, you know, that what we're seeing with the Thor book, uh, typically that's not usually how it goes because once people know that these are the hot covers that are selling, then that's where the speculators come in. That's when the over orders come in. That's when people start, you know, uh, buying up more of the one in 25s and things of that nature. And then they try to sell it and now it becomes a race to the bottom. And one of the most recent examples we can point to with this is when we were all, you know, playfully talking about, you know, the ASM number one hustle sketch edition where they had Spider-Man with Eminem on it. And we were talking about you know the values of this book and then it just became like a thing after that where it's like oh let's put a marvel character with all of the rappers on the cover and then they came out with the deadpool and notorious big one and then they had other ones and what you saw was that yes initially the m&m one sold quite well but you have diminishing returns you know in the market after that this also happened to you know this company as well when they were putting marvel superheroes next to sports athletes you know the initial ones are very very hot and then you know eventually you know it gets oversaturated and there's diminishing returns so i suspect with these blood hunt covers we will see sort of a similar thing. But again, that's not me saying that this is not cool or that you shouldn't buy these books. I'm just sort of pointing out to you guys that you know this seems to be the one right now that has the most market attention. And I would be surprised if the ones coming out after this uh, get the same amount of steam and attention. Now, last little thing before I wrap up the video, just because we haven't actually talked about this and I thought it would be interesting to sort of check in on the prices for our favorite book right here, ASM number one, Hustle Edition with Eminem. 327 on the census when this book initially came out in December of 2022. Look at that sold price, 1725 And then, boom, off the cliff, all the way back down to, you know, a respectable amount still, $500, $600. And, you know, as recently as, you know, a month ago, this book's selling for $600 at the 9A rate. So still not too bad overall. And frankly, it's kind of held its floor. But I think that that goes to show you guys that, you know, when there's a hot book like this, initially, you know, it's at its peak when it initially comes out. And then a few months later, it kind of finds the floor. And if you're somebody who actually wants it, you know, all those months later, you can still get it at that floor price. So, you know, maybe if you have, you know, kind of the FOMO gene, you're kind of feeling like you want to get the Blood Hunt number one pre-screen 9-8 book, you want to spend $600 on it, I'm here to say to you, maybe it would be good to wait. But either way, still cool to see new comic books selling really well on the secondary market. And like always, it happens again and again and again. The more things change, the more they stay the same, there will always be FOMO books in the comic book market and I'll always be there to report on it. Let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think about the blood hunt craze going on right now? How are you guys feeling about this? Are you guys modern collectors out there that are picking this up? Or are you guys, you know, people who like golden age comic books and having a golden age homage cover is the thing that's actually going to make you buy a current comic book title? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. See you on the next one.